Hey folks, it's Duker Dads, and welcome back to my channel, and I'm glad you're here with me again. Uh, you're probably wondering, hey, why are you wearing your backdrop on your head? Well, really it's a handkerchief, and when I'm not using it to make videos, uh, I wear it when I do my workouts, and so as soon as I get done with this video, that's what I'm going to do, and... Uh, the reason why I'm starting to work out again is the doctor said that um, I'm back up to the weight I was at when I was having a lot of health problems about a year ago. and So I'm back up to 267 and that's not good. doctor said the weight has to go so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get rid of some of it. Um, normally my workouts are surrounded with the martial arts and so usually I do like empty hand forms, weapons forms, then I'll practice some techniques with my hands and then, excuse me, um, then I'll get into a, a cool down with Tai Chi or maybe some uh, Ki Chun and what Ki Chun is is it's a Korean version of Chinese uh, Qigong and I'll do that to just kind of get my pulse back down and you know just chill out a little bit but what I really want to talk to you about is um, what forms I do and the philosophy behind the ones that I choose and usually I start out with Taekwondo forms and uh, I have one form, come, one form comes from American Taekwondo and don't know the name of it, but it's very simple, very rudimentary. And then I'll go to uh, World Taekwondo forms, uh, Saju, Chunji, uh, all the Taeguk forms. Those are the ones I know, so those are the ones that I practice quite a bit of. And then I'll, I'll work my way into Cooks of One Empty Hand Forms. I know two of those. And those kind of go beyond what I learned in Taekwondo. And that's why I like to back those up behind Taekwondo. Then I can get into some of the Kung Fu styles that I've learned. Like um, White Eyebrow, White Crane, Hungar, Choi Le Fu, Eagle Claw. Um, Praying Mantis, Monkey Style, I'll mix those styles up and practice all those together. Then I get into the weapons forms and I usually practice uh, solo best on, double best on, or single stick, double stick. Then I get into stabs and I have the stabs of different sizes. Then I get into canes. And I even do a little bit of knife work. And don't worry, I don't use live blades when I'm practicing alone because if I fall and I get hurt, there's no one here to take care of me. So I got to be careful. And I'm prone to falling. When you have a disability, you can't avoid that. And so I got to be careful when I'm practicing alone. And if you practice alone, you should too, because there's no one here if you get hurt, so you got to look out for yourself. But the philosophy behind the forms I chose is, for one, I had led by a, uh, a system called the Keep It Simple Stupid, the KISS method. And I tried to make things as simple as possible, not only when I'm practicing them myself, but when I'm teaching them to somebody else, because if you if you do really flashy techniques and get into stuff that a, a, a novice is not going to understand, then they ain't going to help him out on the streets, and it's not going to help me out on the streets. Flashy moves, just yes, they look pretty in the school, but they don't work in the streets. So that's really why I choose some of the, the, the forms that I do. And I don't do a bunch of somersaults and all that. 
For one, I can't do them because I'm disabled. Never been able to jump, never been able to run. So I got to think about what I can do and what I can't do. And that philosophy comes from Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee said, absorb what is useful and reject what is useless. And not only does that go with the martial arts, but it goes with life in general. Uh, since I'm disabled, there are things I can do and things I can't do. So I have to think about what physically I can do in a self-defense situation and things I can't do. For example, since I can't jump, I can't do a 360 degree back thrust kick. Not going to happen. But I can do a spinning back fist. I can do an inverted back fist, top of a spin. You know, that kind of stuff I can do. But as far as jumping up, I'm not the flying will in this. Let's put it that way. So, and then another uh, philosophy I have behind what I do is um, uh, another Jeet Kune Do theory. By the way, I said theory. Jeet Kune Do is not a style. There's a reason why it's called Jeet Kune Do concept. Because basically it is a theory to design your own martial art. That's basically what Bruce Lee intended. He never intended Jeet Kune Do to become a style. And it just really bugs me when I hear people call it a style because that's not what it is. And if you read the book and listen to his, his philosophy, then the rare tapes that exist of him talking about it, you'll see it is not a style. But... I'm getting off track. Let me get back to where I was at. Another theory is uh, avoid the classical mess. Get rid of it. And, uh, you know, some classical martial arts don't work in today's society. So some of that stuff you got to pilfer through and figure out, you know, what works for today. And last but not least is express yourself. Your martial art, your life should be an expression of who you are. And I would be lying to myself if I, if I was trying to practice a, a part of an art that I know I can't do. And so, therefore, I need to be honest with who I am. So, doing a straight blast from boxing, that is more my style. Doing a, um, let's say, um, from Hathaway to Bando, which is a martial art from Burma. They have a block where it looks like a boar's tusk. And it's mainly designed to block a uh, front kick. This is something I can do. It is feasible for me to do. Not only that, it's more effective than actually trying to stop a punch. You know, grabbing a punch like you see in the movies. No, that's not going to happen. And you have to be extremely fast to do that. But if I did this force tusk from Hathawadi Bando, if a guy throws a punch or a kick, he's basically going to break his foot on that. So that's, that's why I would rather do that than try to be all Bruce Lee, as they say, and try to catch a punch. Plus, I could throw a strike off of this. See? So not only is it a block, it's a strike. So that, that's pretty much what my philosophy is. And um, I, if you're a martial artist, I hope you like what I had to say. And if you're a 
Jeet Kune Do Silas, please don't take what I say to heart. Uh, it's just that everybody had their own view of what Bruce Lee was trying to express. For me, I'm more of a traditional uh, theorist in the fact that Bruce Lee, that's what it was, was theory. To me, it's not a style because the way that Jeet Kune Do is taught in a lot of schools, you're learning a bit of this, a bit of this, and a bit of this. And you're really not mastering a whole style. And you've got so many things in your head that you've learned that how are you going to pull that off in a street situation? And so that's why it bugs me when people call it a style. So again, I apologize. It is merely my opinion. And if you don't like what I said, leave it down in the comment section. Because this is a conversation we can have. And I love talking about stuff like that. So even though we may not agree on things, it'll be good to have that conversation. And if you're not a martial artist, just take the time to listen to what I had to say. Uh... Talk about Bruce Lee if you want to, if that's all you know. Because I've liked him ever since I was a kid, and just talking about him put a smile on my face. But if you like what I do on my channel, please like. If you don't like, subscribe or dislike it. And if you really like what I do on this channel, subscribe. You know, like I say, this is not just for me, it's for you as well. With that being said, this is Duke or Does. Again, saying do good and deuces, folks. Have a good one.